This video is a brief exploration of the dynamics of Boolean function composition. Along the way, we'll give an answer to the question, what is the probability of AND? Let's begin with functions of a single variable. We can display all such functions using an input-output table, where we list the input variable x in its two possible states, 0, 1, and then we display all possible mappings of outputs to the input states. We can see there are four possible mappings, which correspond to the single variable Boolean functions. We can see that the first Boolean function always outputs false, the second Boolean function is the identity function, the third function is the negation function, and the final function is constantly true. Now let's look at the notion of composition. To compose two functions, we feed the output of fj into fi. We can observe that composed functions must be equivalent to one of the four possible one variable Boolean functions, because regardless of the number of compositions, the composed function is mapping a single Boolean variable to a Boolean value. And there are only four ways of doing this. As such, we can draw a composition table where we list four once composed functions, where along the rows we list the outer function of the composition, and along the columns we list the inner function of the composition. And the entries correspond to the computational equivalents of the composed function. So for instance, constantly false as an outer function will always return false regardless of the inner function. The identity function will always return the inner function, and the negation function will always return the negation of the inner function. So note that the negation of identity is negation, and the negation of negation is identity. We're now interested in doing the same type of analysis except for Boolean functions of two variables. So first we'll start with the input-output table displaying all possible two variable Boolean functions. Some of these functions are more well known than others. For instance, AND and OR are very popular. Equals and implication are slightly less popular. And there's other exotic functions such as exclusive OR, not AND. There are also functions that return the state of x1 and functions that return the state of x2. And then of course there are the constantly true and constantly false functions. So let's consider the once composed two variable Boolean functions. We'll call the outer function f sub h for head and the two inner functions f sub 1 and f sub 2 we will call the composed function f sub c. Note that in general, f sub c is not equivalent to f sub h. Now, since f sub h, f sub 1, and f sub 2 can all be one of 16 possible two variable Boolean functions, we have 16 cubed equals 4096 possible once composed two variable Boolean functions. We're interested in the distribution of functional equivalents in the 4096 once composed functions to the 16 possible two variable Boolean functions. For instance, is functional equivalency equally distributed among the 16 possible two variable Boolean functions in the 4096 once composed functions, or is the distribution skewed? We can see in the one variable case that the distribution is not equal. We will investigate this question through basic combinatorial counting principles. The first innovation we'll introduce will be an alternative table representation for the once composed two variable Boolean functions. So if we name our four possible input states, 1 through 4, in the arrangement of 1, 2, 3, and 4 in the cells of this table uniquely defines the functions f sub 1 and f sub 2. f sub h is uniquely defined by assigning a 1 or a 0 to each of the cells of the table. To understand the distribution of the 4096 once composed Boolean functions, we will count tables by functional equivalency. Let's take an example, let's say f sub c, meaning the composed function is equivalent to the AND function. How many tables correspond to the AND function? Or in other words, are computationally equivalent to AND? Well, the two constraints on the table are that input state 4 has to be, has to be assigned to an accept cell, and the input states 1, 2, and 3 have to be assigned to a reject cell, not necessarily the same cell. We can see that the number of ways of doing this is going to depend on the number of accept cells in the table which will signify by ACC of f sub h. So if the number of accept cells in the table is zero, we know that there are zero tables that compute the AND function, because AND must accept at least one input state. If there is one accept cell in the table, then we can count the one input state being put in the one cell, and each of the three reject states can be placed into any of the three reject cells. And finally, if the head function accepts two cells, we have two options for the accept input state, and we have two options each for the three reject states. We can generalize this counting procedure. So if we denote the number of accept cells by i, then for and, 
we can count the number of computationally equivalent tables by i to the first power times 4 minus i to the third power. We can further generalize by noting that 1 and 3 do not depend on the specific accept state of AND, but merely the number of states that AND accepts, in this case 1. So if we denote by the number of accept states of our composite function ACC F sub C, then we can further generalize our expression counting the number of union tables where F sub H accepts I cells and F sub C accepts J input states as I to the J times 4 minus I to 4 minus J. In this way, we can visualize the space of 4096 once composed two variable Boolean functions along the two dimensions of ACC FH and ACC FC. So every entry in this table is a count of the table representations corresponding to a composite function that accepts I input states in a head function that accepts J cells. Indeed, if we sum all the entries of this table, we get 4096. Finally, to answer the question, what is the probability of AND, we can see in the table that there are 864 ways of representing a composite function that accepts precisely one input state. And since we care about the specific input state, we have to further divide by 4 take 1 equals 4 equals 216, which is approximately 5% of 4096. So a uniformly randomly sampled once composed Boolean function of two variables has a 5% probability of computing AND.